Hi everyone, this is Chad with Good Crib Tutorial. Here's a little preview of a look we're going to be creating. And I just wanted to record a tutorial about wrapping text around objects in Adobe InDesign because I was looking at all my more introductory uh, InDesign tutorials. I noticed I didn't have one specifically on this. And some of the ones already available on YouTube don't have uh, a couple more advanced options and things that are really explained well. Um, so I figured I'd record one um, on wrapping text around objects, well, including photos and shapes. Go ahead and close out this and just go to File New in Adobe InDesign. And once you have that set, just go to File Place. And I'm just going to choose Alice in Wonderland, some public domain available novel. Okay, so I'm not using any columns in this example. I just want to show you some basics about text wrap. If you make sure you have the toolbar open, if you don't have it, just go to Window and then Tools. Make sure that's selected, and click and hold onto the rectangle tool, and you should be able to choose the ellipse tool here, and just click and drag. A little circle out here. I'm going to click this double-sided arrow at the bottom so it flips them, and then just changes to color. And I'm going to move this on top of the text and you notice it covers the text. So if you're creating an ebook or some online magazine, a PDF, or you're creating uh, something for print like a magazine or newsletter, annual report, newspaper, any of those things, and you want text to wrap around an object without having to just manually do it, um, this is how you do that. So go ahead and with the object we want text to wrap around selected, uh, go to Window and then Text Wrap brings up this little dialog box here and if you click this second option here what that does is it wraps it to the bounding box so if you see this this is a circle all right but it has a bounding box that is square shaped so that's what it's wrapping around so if I move this around notice the text automatically wraps around it so you don't have to worry about manually creating new text box to float around say for example a photo and a caption in a newspaper. All right, that's fine, but what if we wanted the text to wrap around the actual object there? Well, then you would select that third option there on the text wrap. What that does, you can see here, it wraps along the edge of the object instead of the bounding box. If you notice when we have these two selected, if you look right here, uh, it, if you click the up arrow, You'll add a little bit of spacing, and you can see it right there, the slight uh, line there. It shows what, how it's, so if I deselect it, you can kind of see what the final result would look like, right? If you click the second one, you know, it just goes to the bounding box. You can actually, if you want the padding to be a little bit closer on the left or right or top or bottom, you can just click this chain link uh, icon, that chain icon. And what that does is it doesn't lock them all together. So if you want to make the bottom one a little bit larger, left one larger, or smaller, um, then you can manually adjust. You can see it here. And it basically pushes up. So let's say the text was a little bit too close on the bottom. You could adjust uh, just the bottom uh, padding there. All right. So that's the basics of text wrap if you you can also do this many different shapes you know just like a regular triangle of course as well um, or a photo but if I put it over here if you click this top uh, text wrap again the second one notice how by default it says both right and left sides if you click on that if you go to right side what that does is it just wraps it around on the right hand side only all right, and you, again, you can still, let's lock these together. You can still add a little bit of padding. And as I move it around, that's if you just wanted some white space on the left-hand side. You can do the same thing left-hand side. If you go to side towards spine, what that is is, this is just one page document, but if I go to window and then pages and uh, just duplicate this page, just click and drag it onto a new. You notice here, if I go to page two and three, on the left hand side, 
uh, it's wrapped on the right hand side and on the right hand side it's wrapped on the left hand side because that's the side that the spine of if this was a book is so that's what side towards spine side away from spine is the exact opposite all right so that's what that means all right largest area whichever side it's on that's the largest it's going to wrap around like so uh, when you're wrapping some technical considerations uh, we usually don't want to aesthetically uh, have it so you know there's just like one or two words on a line or you know half a word something like that usually want it if it's in the middle that's a little bit better or over to the side usually don't want it just very uh, squished text like that all right so that's uh, just the basics w once you start using photos it can get a little bit more um, interesting so for example I still have the word document here if I go to file place and I just choose a photo here and uh, if I control or command um, click and drag the corner to resize notice it just covers up the text so if I click that first one it'll wrap around the bounding box uh, add a little bit of padding that's great now if you wanted to add a photo caption down here though it would push the photo caption away as well or, or the cut line so what you need to do in those instances is just create your caption first I'm just going to type in some random words there or in gibberish and what you want to do is click and drag around both of those and go to object group then add the text wrap what that does is allows you to have the text wrap around both of those objects together all right now when you're using a Photoshop file that has a transparent background for example this one uh, this one just removed the simple white background bring it in as a PSD file and so let's say you know if you just want to go around the bounding box it looks something like that and that's fine uh, uh, another one I should show you is if you click this fourth option what it does is it it doesn't have it on uh, the sides either of the text all right so if you notice no text on the left hand or the right hand side of it it just kind of jumps below so in some layouts you might want to do that all right uh, the fourth one where it says jump to the next column that's if we had columns so if you go to layout and then margins and columns and I'm just gonna set this to four columns one pike a gutter uh, so if I had this text here and then I, I was flowing it into the second column and the third and the fourth uh, what it does is it goes directly to the next column so you notice if I bring it over it'll jump to the next column as soon as it hits that photo all right so that's what that fifth option is um, so if I go to file place and go back to this Photoshop file and let's say instead of just wrapping around the, the bounding box or that shape earlier that was just you know a simple shape like a circle well this is a little bit more complicated what you can do is click that third option and then where it says same as clipping just go to detect edges and what that will do is it will try to detect where it should wrap around it and again we can increase that uh, padding if it's too close like so all right and what's pretty cool about this is you can click the white uh, arrow the direct selection tool and you can see the detected edges right here and you can actually move them around like the points and the paths between the points and the angle of those points with the anchors alright so that's wrapping text around objects basic shapes and photos in Adobe InDesign thanks